What is up YouTube? Brian here, back again with another video. And today we're back to doing route reviews. It's been a minute since we've done any. Um, kind of my fault, I'm out testing and I'm playing with a lot of different rods and, and we're, the reviews are gonna start coming in. I've been fishing a lot in the spring. We're, we're here in early July. Um, so this rod right here is the St. Croix. It's been a minute since we've talked about St. Croix, but this is the rebooted Bass X 7.1 medium power spinning rod. Now, um, just jumping into this real quick. Um, <clears throat> St. Croix rebooted the Bass line, the Bass X line. This is their kind of like price point rod. It's kind of ang uh, targeted at more younger anglers, high school anglers, um, college anglers. It's kind of aimed at the younger crowd with the kind of aggressive, um, interesting branding, the price point and all that kind of stuff. Um, so first off, this is made in Mexico. This is not a USA made rod. It comes with a five year warranty, which is pretty good. Um, the new Bass X line, they added some swim bait rods. They, they kind of expanded the line a little bit, added some new things. But I was curious about the new spinning rods because of how much uh, sea guides went crazy on uh, with, with St. Croix. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but the biggest competitor, I guess, right now to Fuji for guides and components is probably Sea Guide. So Sea Guides are uh, being really aggressive with these rod companies and a lot of rods you're seeing coming out under the $200 price point is a, is a lot of Sea Guide stuff. So apparently, from what I've heard in the industry right now, Fuji's having a really hard time keeping up with uh, output and demand. And so Sea Guide is kind of filling the gap and really getting aggressive with good deals for rod companies. So you're gonna see more and more rod companies using the Sea Guide brand. Now this grip, it's probably the weirdest part about this whole rod. This is a Sea Guide component. This is the grip right here from Sea Guide. This is like a $3 grip. Um, so everything on this rod, you know, it's a $99 rod. So everything is going to be pretty uh, cheap on this rod. Um, but I will say that first off, um, the weight. This thing is 3.4 ounces, which is extremely light. It's actually about right on par with the Victory line as far as weight goes. Um, it's in the hand, it feels extremely light and crisp. Um, this is actually a pretty well balanced rod. Even it's got this really weird long grip. Um, it balances kind of like right about the lock nut, which is kind of what you want. So lightness wise and balance wise, A plus, good marks on it. Well, maybe not A plus, but it's really good. Really good for a $99 rod. It's definitely lighter than like a Dobbins Fury. I, I want to say I owned a Fury seven foot medium spinning rod and this feels a lot lighter in the hand. I don't know the exact specs on that rod. So whatever, I could be wrong. Um, I have a Tatula LT 3000 on this reel. I'm sorry, on this rod right now. A um, couple things. Number one. The weirdest thing with this rod is the grip. <laughs> so uh, this part right here is off the shelf from Sea Guide. St. Croix added this EVA foam cap and they added this little piece of cork on the top. Now, if you're a choker upper, like if you put your whole hand above the reel seat, uh, you're gonna love this rod. This rod is designed for full chokers. So let me show you. So I get my whole hand on here and I still have more cork up at the top to work with. Like that's crazy. Like if you're a choker upper, this rod is for you. They, they made this for you. Now, if you choke down, um, you might only get your hands on the plastic and not even touch the cork if you're a split grip. But if you do what I mostly do is the three fingers with the pinky underneath, uh, you're gonna get mostly plastic with a little bit of the cork. Either way, it's pretty comfortable real seat, even though it's super weird and odd looking, um, it does the job. It's actually pretty okay in hand. Uh, it's a little weird because half your hand is on a cork material and half your hand is on a plastic. I don't always like that. I don't always, I don't like feeling different materials all the time. Um, uh, but you know, it is what it is. It's a $99 rod. Um, looks wise, I think this thing looks great. We got to talk real quick about the guide. So they cheaped out on the guides on this thing. Um, you got guide, um, you got guides with inserts for the first three guides. So the bottom three stripper guides have inserts. So the line comes out pretty good. But then the remaining guides are just, just straight stainless. So like what you get at a really cheap kind of Walmart rod, right? You get just stainless guides through the top. Save some money there, right? They got to mass produce these things. Um, they got to get the cost down. So, But I will say in practice, actually fishing with this rod and casting, um, it casts really nice. Uh, even though it's got the inexpensive cheap stainless guides, which I don't love, um, in practice, actually flinging baits on this rod, they go a long ways. And there's a reason for that. It is because of the classic St. Croix spongy tip. So this is a seven foot medium fast. And so in the St. Croix world, fast is spongy. Uh, this is fast, right? 
Um, I will say that the rod tip does shut down about right here, like, you know, right here in the blank. But man, this tip is super soft. I will say if you're a walleye angler and you're looking for a rod that you can make roll long casts with like what I was throwing right here, paddle tail swim baits, um, or, you know, snap jigging or some kind of plastics. Um, and you want something that you can bass fish with and walleye fish with, this is, this is definitely a rod you should consider. Now, sensitivity wise, um, it, it feels like a hundred dollar rod. It's not, it's not super sensitive, but the, because of the lightness of the rod and the kind of just overall crispiness of this thing, how it kind of feels in hand, it feels good. I, I, I'd say for a hundred dollar rod, you're right. You're in that price point. It's not like lights out amazing sensitivity, but it's not terrible. I think the benefits of this rod is the warranty. Um, the warranty, the weird grip. Some people might really love this grip, especially if you choke up. Um, it is crazy light that 3.4 ounces. Uh, it fishes fine. I threw a lot of paddle tails with this thing. I threw Ned rig and I threw a lot of wacky Senkos. And believe it or not, this is actually not a terrible wacky Senko rod. With that softer tip, if you're a dock skipper, you can kind of really get a nice whippy action of skipping Senkos around like under tree limbs or under docks and that kind of stuff. So for dock fishing rod, even deep water swim baits, I caught a bunch of walleyes with this rod throwing swim baits, did great. Um, so it's a pretty versatile stick. I would say it's probably not powerful enough to be like a good Nico rig rod in grass. Like for grass fishing, I don't think this thing has that much power to kind of wrench. Like if you catch a four or five pound fish in the grass with this thing, uh, you're going to get your butt kicked in my opinion. I think this thing is not that powerful, but open water fishing, dock fishing, you know, shallow water, sparse cover. I think this rod is definitely great. can be super versatile. Like I said, I wouldn't use this rod in really adverse conditions. I think these guides, like if you fish a lot in the cold, like where your guides might freeze a little bit, you do not want this stainless. Like the, these metal guides, when it's really cold in the winter and you get ice and snow buildup, it sucks. Really brutal on these cheap guides. So this is not for the uh, use in the winter or really cold climates, which I know, you know, that's not kind of a niche thing for us up north. But um, overall, I don't love this rod, but I also didn't, I don't hate it. So it's definitely a good workhorse rod. Um, this is one I'm gonna hand to kids, hand to you know wives or whatever, fish off the dock. Maybe if I gotta go some place where I gotta hike or going down some sketchy hills or something, I'm gonna bring this rod. Um, but you know what, you can do worse for a hundred bucks. I think, um, you know, is it worth stepping up to the victory line over this? That's an interesting question because I don't know how much better other than like guide components, the, you know, the victory rods are than this. This has SC2. So if you guys don't know in the St. Croix world, the number after SC is the generation of their, of their blank. So this is the second generation blank, which means it's slightly older. Um, you know, so if you see SC2, SC3, SC4, that just means St. Croix generation two, St. Croix generation three, etc. So the latest greatest is always the most expensive. And then the price point rods get the old versions of their blank technology, whatever. So anyway, just, just a fun fact with St. Croix. So, um, you know, I don't know if this is a great review on this rod because I, I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. It, for a hundred bucks, it seems perfectly fine. If you're a St. Croix fan, you're going to love these things for a hundred bucks. Is it a better version than the old Bass X? I'm not sure. I didn't really use the Bass Xs very, I, at all. Actually, I've never used the Bass X out on the water. I've only played with them in the stores. This is the first time I've actually owned one. So I'm not a really, I don't have a really great comparison from the old to the new. Sorry about that. But um, I'm guessing these are a lot lighter. Um, I like the whippy tip, man. If you got to make real long casts and you got to work some deep water, or if you want to dock fish, I think this is a this is a pretty good stick. So anyway, these are available right now on Omnia. You can uh, click the link in the description, and there's also a discount code that you could try on these, and it may or may not work. Just saying. Um, anyway, if you got any questions, comments, uh, I'm not gonna pick up any more of these. I'm definitely probably not gonna pick up this casting models of this. I don't I don't really need them. I just kind of picked this up on a whim because I thought it'd be fun to review a price point rod. And honestly, I don't hate it. It's, it's perfectly nice. I, I could use this rod every day uh, for some finesse applications and, and be perfectly fine. So um, I guess the best review of this rod is it doesn't suck. Even though I keep hitting, I, this room is tough to review rods on because I got this wall right here. So sorry if it keeps smacking the wall. But anyway, that's all I got for now. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments below. And also if you've made it this far in the video, please hit like and subscribe. And as usual, follow me on the Instagram. That's where I post a lot of my on-water fishing content. And until next time, we'll see you soon.